Hello, Hola, how tal? are you? Si If you have coronary heart disease or stable angina, what we are going to discuss here will be of interest to you. Coronary heart disease means that your heart is not pumping as much blood as your body needs and is characterized by feeling weak, dizzy, and very tired. Fluid builds up in the lungs and other parts of the body. This causes shortness of breath and swelling. Angina pectoris is a symptom of coronary heart disease. Most people feel pain or pressure in the chest. Some people feel other symptoms. These include pain, pressure, or a strange feeling in the back, neck, jaw, or upper belly, or in one or both shoulders or arms. We are concerned here with stable angina, i.e. angina whose symptoms occur at predictable times, such as when exercising, and disappear after rest or after taking nitroglycerin. In these cases, there are two options, either have an angiogram to decide on the best treatment for coronary artery disease, or don't have one. But let's start at the beginning. A coronary angiogram is an X-ray test that takes pictures of blood flow through the coronary arteries. It helps the doctor see if, where, and how much the arteries are narrowed. During the test, a thin tube called a catheter is placed in an artery in the wrist or groin. It is then gently threaded up to the heart, where a dye is added to see the arteries on the X-ray. Before the test, you may be given a medicine that relaxes or numbs you a little. The area to be worked on will have an anesthetic, so it is logical to feel a brief pinch when it is put in. You may also feel some pressure when the doctor inserts the catheter, or you may feel some heat when the contrast dye is inserted. The procedure will last between one and three hours. You may be able to go home the same day, but some people have to stay in hospital overnight. Strenuous activities should be avoided until the doctor gives the go-ahead, which may take several days. Coronary heart disease occurs when fatty deposits called plaque build up inside the coronary arteries. These arteries surround the heart and supply it with blood and oxygen. When plaque builds up, it can narrow the arteries. This limits the amount of blood reaching the heart muscle. If the plaque ruptures, a blood clot can cause a heart attack. Narrowing of the arteries can cause angina symptoms, such as chest pain or pressure and shortness of breath. Treatment of coronary heart disease helps to relieve symptoms, slow the progression of the disease, and prevent a heart attack. Treatments include medication, a heart-healthy lifestyle, angioplasty, and coronary bypass surgery. All people with heart disease should take medication and lead a heart-healthy lifestyle, even if they undergo angioplasty or surgery. Angioplasty by the way, is a procedure performed to open a narrowed or blocked blood vessel so that blood can flow more easily. To do this, a catheter is threaded from the groin, arm, or wrist into the narrowed artery. At this point, a small balloon is inflated, which may remain inflated for a short period of time. The aim is to press the fat and calcium deposits, plaque, against the artery wall to improve blood flow. Once the fat and calcium buildup has been compressed, a small expandable tube called a stent is sometimes inserted into the artery to keep it open. The artery is less likely to narrow again, called restenosis, after angioplasty with stenting than after angioplasty alone. Coronary artery bypass surgery, or bypass, is performed to bypass a part of an artery that has become narrowed or blocked by plaque buildup.
Esa parte that se part is bypassed using a blood vessel taken from a part of the body, usually the chest or, or leg. Con ello se This restores blood flow to the affected part of the heart cardíaco. muscle. Because it helps you and your doctor choose the best treatment. In particular, it can help the doctor assess whether a change in treatment could reduce the risk of having a heart attack or dying from heart problems. This technique can show the doctor where there are plaques that have narrowed the arteries and if blood flow is slow. But it cannot show whether these plaques will cause a heart attack. An angiogram is also indicated to assess whether a procedure or surgery might improve angina symptoms. An important note, having the test does not mean that you are going to have angioplasty or bypass surgery. But, if during the angiogram your doctor sees that your arteries are narrowed, he or she may perform angioplasty immediately. Therefore, before undergoing this test, it is best to have discussed this possibility with your doctor. You may not make good decisions when you are drowsy from medication. Angiography is not suitable for everyone. It has risks, which are discussed in the next section, and it may be possible to obtain the necessary information in other, safer ways. It is not usually suggested if you are at low risk of myocardial infarction or if you do not have symptoms of angina pectoris. On the other hand, if angina can be controlled with medication and a heart-healthy lifestyle, this test is unlikely to lead to change changes in treatment, and there is certainly little point in having this test if angioplasty or bypass surgery is not in the cards. Most people have no problems during or after angiography. Myocardial infarction and stroke occur rarely, but can be life-threatening. They are more likely to occur in older people or people with health problems that increase the risk of heart attack or stroke. Other problems that can occur during or shortly after an angiogram include a sudden tear or closure in an artery, allergic reaction to the dye used to view the arteries, kidney damage related to the dye, bleeding or bruising at the site where the catheter was inserted. On the other hand, there are certain health conditions that can increase the risk of problems after angioplasty. These include heart failure, heart valve problems, and chronic kidney disease. Your risk of heart attack may be higher if you have left main coronary artery disease. Having these conditions does not mean that you will have problems with the procedure, but you should talk to your doctor to find out if your particular risk is higher than average. Finally, under this heading, There is a slight risk of damage to cells or tissues from radiation exposure. Low levels of X-rays are used in this test. But if you are concerned, it is best to discuss this with your doctor to assess whether the benefits of the test outweigh the risks. The benefits of angiography are not the sort of thing that can be measured directly in numbers. The main reason to consider having the test is to make better decisions about how to treat heart disease. In terms of risk, it should be said that less than 1 in 100 people have a stroke, have a major hemorrhage, or die shortly afterwards. These figures are based on observed complication rates in patients, not studies. An angiogram can show if, where, 
and how much your coronary arteries are narrow. It can help your doctor see if a change in treatment such as medicines, angioplasty or bypass surgery can improve your angina or reduce your risk of heart attack or death from heart problems. An angiogram cannot show whether narrowing of the arteries will lead to a heart attack. There are other tests that can provide the information needed to make treatment decisions without the risks of an angiogram. If, during the test, the doctor sees that the arteries are narrowed, he or she may be able to perform angioplasty on the spot. Therefore, before undergoing the test, it is a good idea to talk to your doctor about this eventuality, ask him or her what the test can show and what the options are in each case. If you don't want to undergo angioplasty or bypass surgery, angiography doesn't seem to make sense, does it? Anyway, whatever the case, I hope it goes very well. Thank you very much.